60 Minutes Rewind. We needn't remind you that from time to time some oddball stories turn up in this broadcast. Some really strange things. For example, this story. We call it, It's a Long Way to Furdu, and you'll see why a little later. It all started when we were out in Singapore a couple of months ago. There's a place in that part of the world we'd never been to. In fact, no one we knew had ever been to. We weren't even sure we could find it. And even if we found it, would there be a story there to justify the trip? Well, since we were in the neighborhood, the challenge seemed irresistible. And that's how we ended up in the middle of the Indian Ocean in this place. A place called the Republic of Maldives, the Maldive Islands a succession of atolls in the Indian Ocean, extremely remote and beautiful beyond description. They lie well south of India and a bit to the left. The Maldives' best known contribution to the world is the word atoll. There are a thousand islands, but only 200 of them are inhabited. In the world power struggle, they are non-aligned. And as we'll see, that's not the only way they are non-aligned. Another thing worth knowing is that they have the highest divorce rate in the world. No one quite knows why, but it is surprising, given that both men and women are so decent to outsiders. There are 130,000 Maldivians. They speak their own language and a bit of English, and they're scattered across 500 miles of ocean. For a long time, the only way you could contact the Maldives' only diplomat, its UN ambassador, was to leave a message at a stamp shop on 57th Street in New York. Most of the world recognizes the Maldives, but only India, Pakistan, and Libya maintain embassies in the capital city of Mali. The United States has an honorary consul, a Maldivian named Rashida Didi. When asked how she got the job, she said she applied for it. So now the great seal of the United States resides at Mandu Darugi on the main Magu, that is the main street of Mali. Now normally when 60 Minutes decides to do a country, we try to interview the top people. So we called on the president, Mr. Nasir. After some waiting, it was evident that Mr. Nasir had absolutely no intention of seeing us. After all, where is it written in Maldivian or English, for that matter, that presidents must talk to reporters? Besides, no one here in Mali ever heard of CBS or 60 Minutes or gives a damn about either. We decided to press on anyway. <laughs> Mali apparently grows more and more like Washington every day. There's a ministry of this and that and the other thing. And you can't take a stroll without meeting a ministry. Ministers, however, are extremely elusive. We'd heard that the president-designate of the Maldives was the minister of transport, Mr. Gayoum. When President Nasir decided to step down, he called for a national referendum to name a successor. The only name allowed on the ballot was Mr. Gayoum's. If you're wondering why you're looking at native Maldivian shipbuilders chanting their ancient songs and plying their ancient craft, instead of seeing an interview with a president-designate, it's because Mr. Gayoum also had no intention of seeing us. We didn't know that. We waited for some sign from the ministry. Killing time reading Moonlight, Molly's only English paper. We were thus moonlighting when a young man approached and informed us that things were even worse than they seemed. Tell me, when is the Minister of Transport coming in? What time does it open? It's closed now. Well, maybe tomorrow morning uh, open. Tomorrow? Tomorrow morning, uh, 8 o'clock. So the minister won't be in? I'm sure tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you. That seemed to be that, a career to be broken on the coral shoals of the Maldive Islands. The people seemed so friendly, nature's own gentlemen. Life in Mali is calm and sedate, yet colorful. The market is alive with people, and the people are alive with fish. 
and the fish are alive with flies and all is well with the world. That is, if you're a Maldivian. But a man in search of a story finds he is neither fishing nor is he cutting bait. He's getting desperate and he's confused. This is Oral Roberts and you, a weekly half hour of inspiration. What on earth is Oral Roberts doing in the middle of the Indian Ocean? Is it a quirk of the airwaves, or have we come the long way round to rediscover Oklahoma? What gives? And now may I present to you author, educator, evangelist, and my dad, Oral Roberts. <laughs> It seems that President Nasir sells time on Radio Maldives to American evangelists who want their message beamed to southern India. Maldivians themselves seem oblivious to it all. Just another oddity in a society filled with surprises. Let me say to you from the bottom of my heart something I really believe. Something good is going to happen to you today. But Maldivian faith remains unshaken. The islands are 100% Muslim. No other churches need apply. They underwent a mass conversion to Islam 800 years ago when a shipwrecked Moroccan saint made the king of the Maldives see the light. The Maldivians are the most gentle of people. Physical violence is practically unheard of here. One Maldivian rarely hurts another. Last year, a German traveler named Blum stabbed and killed his girlfriend in a fit of jealousy. And we'd heard that because crime was so rare here, there was no death sentence and there wasn't even a prison to put him away in. But there was a typically Maldivian solution, one that President Nasir has been using for years on his political enemies, banishment. We'd heard that that German had been banished for life to the distant isle of Furadu. So I spent a day on the waterfront in Mali, seeing if we could hitch a ride there, talk to the culprit, and get some idea of the Maldivian penal system. I felt for sure the whole thing was futile, that my papers wouldn't be in order, some bureaucratic hitch. But I found I didn't need permission to go to the banishment island. That's the way things seem to work in the Maldives. Don't ask, and you shall receive. I did meet a man who said he'd be here at 6 o'clock, and that's in five minutes, and he'd be here with a boat. We'll see if he turns up. She's not a new ship, but she is a noble one. And under sail, you'd hardly know that she spent most of her life running dried fish to Ceylon. Creaky, but reliable. And here we are, on board the good ship Dandahalu, bound from Mali to Furadu. We've been at sea all of a night and most of a day, and still no sight of land. The Maldivian sense of time and distance needs some working on. We were told the trip would take six hours. We are rapidly approaching day three. Three. Three knots is not quite the speed we're making. Still. Out here on these gloriously calm waters, there's little to complain about. The sails may be only just full, but the imagination is bursting. It is on rare days like this that you must ask, do they really pay me to do this? Yes, but the tub is 50 years old and the waters below are filled with sharks. Our Maldivian captain is a cautious man. He's never been to Furadu either, and the charts indicate the island's practically surrounded by a barrier reef. Finally, just as the light is failing, a line of palms and a ribbon of surf appears. Furadu, in all its glory. That's the island over there? Yes, that is the island. This is the island. Are these dangerous waters here? That's why I'm looking uh, very much. We, uh, sometimes we can't see that if if we are not uh, looks very much. Yes, so, uh, you've got yeah. to be very careful. Yes, so we have to be very careful. 
It's very shallow here. You can see the yes. bottom. Yes, yes. Okay. Remember that we're here to talk to that banished German. We don't know what to expect. Will the people be friendly? After all, we're only the second outsiders they've ever seen. Does Blum speak English? Is he even still there? Well, the people could not be more friendly. Before I can ask them if anyone's heard of Joachim Blum, a figure appears. Mr. Blum? Something out of a Joseph Conrad fantasy. Uh, do you speak English? Yeah. But it's not easy for me to speak. Maybe for how long I'm here? For one and a half year, I speak only the way. Well, perhaps. Uh, only Maldives. Uh -huh. And so it's not easy for me. How are you? Good, very good. I wonder if you could just tell me what your life has been like here. There's a great difference between a life in America or in Germany and here. I think a very great difference. But I feel much better in this island as in Germany. Uh, I feel now much better than in Germany before. But given that if you'd been in Germany, you'd be in a prison, right? Yeah, in a prison, uh, that's, that's, that's clear, but uh, also not if I'm free in Germany. Even, even yeah. as a free... You mean you prefer banishment yeah. here to being a free man in Germany? Yeah. You have to work uh, eight hours a day, and all the day the same... Uh, every day the same work, and I didn't like it. And what do you what do you do all day here? Nothing. <laughs> we do not mean to glorify a murderer, but this is the kind of thing that the best and the worst fiction is made of. Are you going? Yeah. Bloom has become in every way an islander. He has taken their religion and he has taken a bride. Banishment for him has meant a certain kind of paradise. You count yourself a very lucky man in many ways. Yeah, I'm a lucky man at the moment. When you arrived here, were the, the people here uh, suspicious of you or friendly or what? Friendly. Uh, I, at, the, at the first day, I didn't know I'm a banished man. Because you are free if you come to an island. If you if you go in a prison, you you are not free. You have a, always to stay in the jail. He says he could never return to the world. If he was pardoned, he would visit his family, then come back to Furadu. The days pass easily. He's teaching the islanders chess. They taught him their language. And they taught him how to survive in paradise how to handle a locally made doni, the tricks of fishing off the reef. Are there times when you don't know what day it is or what month it is? Yeah. I, I think today the, maybe the 1st of October? No. 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 What day do you think it is? Day. Sunday, I think. You're right, it is Sunday, mm. but it's not the 1st mm. of October. But it's, uh, what date today? Uh, I'm not sure. It's the 6th or 7th, I think. O October. Of October. There isn't any need to know it, to know the date. <laughs> <laughs> Poor 23-year-old Joachim Blum. You probably never heard of him before and never will again. A fit of temper in Molly cost him a future in a Frankfurt factory. Now he strolls the perfect beach, having found what so many Americans hunger for in their search for the perfect tan. Others have begun searching for it in these islands in a more traditional way. The tourists are coming. 
not to disturb the peace of Joachim Blum on Foradu, but back on the main islands. Only a handful there now, but we can guarantee that more are on the way, perhaps 40,000 next year, mainly from Europe. They too will suffer or enjoy a kind of banishment. No hotels on Mali, so they're sent to nearby islands to hotels that are owned by President Nasir or President Gayoum or their pals. Everyone seems quite content with that arrangement. The tourists barbecue themselves or seek out the horrors and glories of the deep. Ignoring this rather zany, quirky, gentle society, and the Maldivians ignore the tourists. Strange customers all, not unlike the exhortations of the evangelists who preach to them on their own radios. Jim, would you tell us how the city of faith construction is coming along? I just came from there, Oral. It's rising out of the ground. They're starting to go up with the columns. The sheer walls are beginning to rise. They're even pouring a floor. It's coming up. They just get on with the job of flogging their fish and sailing their donies and happily divorcing each other. So from Fua Malaku in the south to Kiltan in the north and Furadu in the middle, life is just one long, long summer. We left the most important part of this story to the end. It seemed a pity to interrupt what's so far been a pretty happy tale. The Russians are coming, or at least they want to, if you can believe it, there's an even more remote atoll at the very tip of this archipelago called Gan. There's an abandoned British air base there that the Russians would like to have so that they could watch over an American base on an even more remote Indian Ocean island called Diego Garcia. The Maldivians turned down the Russian offer of $1 million a year. That's the biggest offer anybody's ever made for anything in these islands in order to stay on other people's quarrels. Poor, unsophisticated people. Don't they know how great this place could look with a few strands of barbed wire and some watchtowers? 